No way to put into words. Amen. 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 The Lord, hallelujah, yes. and what He means. Yes, Lord. To me, oh, hallelujah. We pray. My, my, my. Give you honor and glory. I talked to a man late last night who's been led astray into false doctrine and seemingly wanted to debate things that really doesn't matter at all. I told him that the things that we were talking about were the least, as far as the least important of our disagreements. Right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. It's like worrying about doing your laundry while your house is on fire. Amen. On. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> to uh, worry about all those things and to leave the most important thing undone just makes no sense. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the day that we live in, so many today are leaving the most important thing undone. Right. Amen. True. Working and living to their fullest in this life. Yeah. Their best life now, and I don't even mean that as a pun toward the best-selling book, but that's the mindset of most people. Amen? Oh, Hallelujah. That's what their goal is, to have their best life now. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But those that are washed in the blood, those that know of a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, Amen. know that there is a better day coming. Oh. Amen? We know that there's a better life coming. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We know that this is not heaven on earth. Amen? On. Hallelujah. But that one day we will cross over death's chilly tide yes. and we will be in that place prepared for man by Jesus Christ. Amen? For all Amen. those that will accept Him. Mm -hmm. Last week we talked about our old heart. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. And we talked about how that today the society seems to think that, that you can separate your heart from your actions. They seem to think that you, you can be living wrong, but your heart still be right. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how that Brother Jim Nation said that a right heart will produce right living. <laughs> Amen. And a wrong heart will produce wrong living. And that it is impossible for you to keep that which is in your heart from affecting the way you live. Now those things some people might have a problem with and they might use the statements that well God sees my heart and he only looks on the heart and that I'm, I'm living, you know, I may not be living right but my heart is right and all of that stuff we talked about last week. Amen. But we prove beyond the shadow of a doubt with God's word. You see, that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. Not what Brother Sleese has to say about it. Not what Brother Billy's opinion is. Not what Brother David's opinion is. Right. But what does God's Word say yeah. about it? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because if your opinion goes against this book, right. if, your, if your doctrine goes against this book, right. it's wrong. Your, your doctrine is wrong. Right. Your opinion is wrong. Right. Not, amen? Exactly. The book is right. Always. Exactly. So we prove beyond a shadow of doubt by the words of Jesus, uh -huh. some, some words from the Old Testament, but also some words that Jesus spoke in the New Testament, that what is in our heart does indeed affect our actions. Amen. Absolutely. It does indeed sooner or later. We found out last week that we are more transparent than we think. Absolutely. Sooner or later, that which we have in our heart will affect the way that we live. Oh, Amen. Right. Jeremiah spoke these words. The heart is deceitful above all things. Yeah. And desperately wicked. Amen. Who can know it? The Lord, the Bible says, I the Lord search the heart. Mm. I try the reins. Even to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Jesus said that we will know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Jesus said it's those things that proceed out of the heart of a man that defiles him. And he talked about adulteries and lies and on down the line. The thefts, those things that that man do, our actions that we do start somewhere other than just if I steal something theft has began in my heart. Amen? If I commit adultery, adultery began in my heart. Right. If I lie, lying began in my heart. Amen. Many times someone will go to the doctor. Maybe they have chest pains. Uh -huh. Maybe they have shortness of breath. Yeah. Maybe they have weak spells. Yeah. And the doctor can try and just treat those symptoms, which is what we do in the church many times. Right. Or the doctor can run some tests and try to trace the symptoms back to the cause. Yeah, come Amen. on. Amen. Come on. 
If we trace the sin that does so easily beset us, the thing that we do, the outward manifestation of it, right. if we trace that back, we're going to find the root of that problem is in our heart. Mm -hmm. yes. And we proved that with the Word of God last Amen. week. Mm -hmm. And today I want to talk for just a few minutes a little bit more about the heart. <laughs> There's a saying that I'm sure you've heard over and over, as have I, and this is the title of today's sermon. The heart of the matter. Come on. Now, if you look up the definition of this phrase, where it came from and all of that, it means the core, the main reasoning for the problem. Come on. The writer went on to say, like the heart is the main essence of a person that keeps them alive. Amen. The heart of the matter is what's causing the issue that they're having problems with. The heart of the matter is what's causing something to be an issue in your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why David, whenever he was confronted with his sin, and that's who we're going to talk about first this morning is David. When he was confronted with his sin with Bathsheba, about his sin with yeah. Bathsheba, his prayer was created me a clean heart. Yes. Renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Because David knew, and you can tell by his other writings, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. You can tell by his writings that David knew right. that his problems did not begin with just an outward action or something that he did, but his problem <laughs> began in David's heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. David knew this. Yes, right. So you can say that God looks on the heart, and you're right. God does look on the heart, but sooner or later, we must realize the truth that sooner or later, yeah. that which is in your heart will produce fruits on the outside. Amen. That which is in your heart. That's why the Bible says you will know them by the fruit that they bear. Amen. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus told them, you look right on the outside till you open your mouth. Amen. Amen. And when they opened their mouth, then they revealed that which is in their heart. Right. We do that today. Yes, sir. When we open our mouth, we reveal what is in our heart. Absolutely. Amen. David, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart. David would write in Psalms 119 and 11, Thy word, and I quoted this while ago, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. David knew that which he had in his heart would affect the way that he lived. Yes, David knew that his sin with Bathsheba, his murder of her husband, yes. was not just a problem with the outward man, but it was a problem that began and was birthed in his heart. Yes. His plan to have an affair with Bathsheba began in his heart. Exactly. His plan to kill her husband, to have him murdered, to kill him, to murder him himself, the Bible calls him the murderer, Absolutely. began in his heart. True. We must look below the surface today Amen. and figure out and pray, God, I know that this thing, I would not have done it yes, had it not first have been in my heart. Come on. Lord, take your Holy Ghost light. Search me. Try the reins of my heart. Oh. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. We're going to pick this up. Saul has already fell out of favor with God mm -hmm. yeah. because of the rebellion that was where? In his heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? The rebellion that was in Saul's oh. heart. Amen. So he's already fell out of favor. Yeah. And God mm -hmm. sends the prophet mm -hmm. to go to Jesse's house to look for a king. He said, I'm going to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the king of Israel. To take the place of Saul because Saul had grieved the very heart of God because of his rebellion. Because of his sin in the sight of God. And we find in 1 Samuel 16 and 3 it says, And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Yes. And Samuel did that which the Lord spoke, which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. 
and said, Comest thou peacefully? Now see, the first thing they thought, he, he's fixing to come and tell us something bad. He's fixing to come and prophesy doom. Yes. Amen? Amen? So they kind of got upset and they got a little nervous when the prophet showed up. Yes. Amen? Amen? Maybe they wasn't living right. Right. Hey, some people get nervous when the preacher shows up. True. Amen? <laughs> I remember Brother Hinton telling years ago about a man that he saw in Kroger's one of the store in Oldenboro. And the man didn't realize that he had saw, that Brother Hinton had saw him uh -huh. first. When the man saw Brother Hinton, he was smoking a cigarette. When he saw Brother Hinton, he stuck the cigarette in his pocket. Uh -huh. And it was lit. So he's standing there talking to Brother Hinton, and Brother Hinton said he thought to himself, I better get out of here before uh -huh. the fool sets himself on fire. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So, you might be able to fool the preacher. Amen. Uh -huh. These people were afraid the preacher came to town and God done showed the preacher what they was doing. Amen? Oh, come on. So he said, I come peacefully. This is verse 5. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. To sa so sanctify yourself and come with me yeah. to the sacrifice. Oh. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Yeah. Now listen. Verse 6 says, And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Now listen. All right. He sees Eliab, which is the son of Jesse, oh. and he says, Surely this is the man for the job. Yeah. Jesse begins to march his sons through there, and Samuel the prophet is ready to anoint the man that God wants. So Eliab comes in there, and he's big, he's muscular. He looks like a king. So Samuel thinks, surely this is the man yeah. that God is looking for. Yes, Lord. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, uh -huh. because I have refused him. All right. Why? Listen. For the Lord seeth, not as man seeth. Mm -hmm. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Come on. Did you hear that? Amen. According to man's standards, yeah. Eliab would have been a good choice. Right. But God had refused him. Why? Not because he wasn't big enough in stature, not because he wasn't muscular enough, but because of his heart. Come on. God had refused him because of his heart. Amen. And the man that he would choose, he would choose. Because of the man's heart. Yes. Amen? Come on. Not because of his stature. Mm -hmm. Not because of his height. Mm -hmm. It says, Then Jesse called Abinadab. Yes. And made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Now Samuel's beginning to get confused. He's thinking, wait a minute. Right. The Lord told me to come up here and anoint a man to be king of Israel. Come on. And all of the ones that Jesse marches in there, none of them are the ones that God wants. And Samuel's saying, Is this all you got? Something's not right here. Is this all of your children? Come on. And Jesse replied, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Right. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. All right. So Samuel says, Well, if you got one more, you better bring him, because these are not it. These are not the ones that God has chosen. Amen. God has looked beyond the outward appearance and looked upon the heart. Yes. Amen. True. He has looked upon their heart, and they are not it. So he said, Send. Send and get. The youngest one, because we ain't gonna sit down until it happens. And he sent and he brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. Now he didn't look like no warrior. Yeah. He didn't look like no rough man of war or battle. Come on. But the Lord said unto Samuel in verse 12, yeah. Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Yes. Why? Why did God choose David? It wasn't because of his stature. It wasn't because of his height. It wasn't because of his manly and, and warrior-like appearance. No. It was because of his heart. heart. Amen? Amen? It was because of his heart. Yes. 
And I began to look and see what all the Bible says about the heart of King David. Yeah. Did you know the Bible says that David was a man who walked in integrity of heart and uprightness? It says that in 1 Kings 9 and 4. It says in 1 Kings 11 and 4, when talking about Solomon, the wisest man in all the world, this will show you what wisdom don't get you yeah. everywhere, that Solomon, when he was old, he turned and, and his wife turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect, the Bible says, with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Mm -hmm. So it says that David's heart was perfect with the Lord. It says that David was a man that had a heart of integrity. It says in 1 Kings 14 and 8 that David followed God with all of his heart to do that that was right in the sight of God. So the Bible describes David as having a heart of integrity. Yeah. It describes David as having a heart of uprightness. It describes David as having a perfect heart before the Lord. Yeah. It describes David as a man who followed God mm -hmm. with all of his heart. heart. It doesn't describe him as being a great warrior. It doesn't describe him as being fierce and, and, and tall in stature, but it yeah. describes his heart. Because that's what God is concerned with today is our heart. Right. And I can get amens all over the church house and many of the mega churches as far as that goes. Yeah. But when you begin to preach that that which is in your heart sooner or later is going to show up on the outside in your actions and in the fruit that you bear, that's whenever you lose a lot of them. Amen. Because they believe in their twisted way. They have twisted the word and believe that you can live one way and your heart can be another. Right. Amen? True. Never understanding that our heart produces our fruit. Amen. Our heart produces our doings. Now, was David on, sinless? No. no. He sinned. He sinned. Right. Grievously. Yes. Murder. Adultery. Amen. Amen. We can look at David's actions and know that he was not perfect at what we think of perfection. When we say perfect today, we think about someone who does not sin. Right. That's one of the first things that comes to our mind. When God looks at perfection, He looks at it in a different way than we do. Come on. One of the things it means is mature. Amen. All right. But David, in his heart, had the, the Bible says integrity. It says that he sought to do the will of the Lord. Mm -hmm. David would write in Psalm 42 and 1, As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Amen. See, David had a heart that was after God. Yeah. That pursued God. 1 Samuel 13 and 14 says, The Lord had sought him a man after his own heart, and he yeah. found that in King David. Yeah. He found in David a man that had a heart Amen. after God. Right. He found in King David not a perfect man, not a man that would never sin, but a man in his heart that had his, his face set like flint toward God and possessing that which God had. Yes. So we find in David a heart after God. Yes. Sinless, no. Perfect as far as in the flesh, no. But he had a heart after God. Did you know David had a heart that knew conviction? Right. Whenever he, when Saul was after David to kill him. Yeah. And you can read it that one time while Saul was asleep, David got close enough to cut the hem of his garment off. Could have killed him then. Right. But because David believed that Saul was God's anointed, mm -hmm. even if the anointing was no longer there. Because God's anointing rested there at one time. Yeah. David would not touch him. Mm -hmm. Come on. But when he even just cutting the hem of his garment, let's see what the Bible say happened whenever he done that. It says that, and it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him. Right. Because he had cut off Saul's skirt. Come on. When David numbered the people in 2 Samuel 24 and 10, it says that David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly against thee. Why? Because the first part of the verse says, and David's heart smote him after he numbered the people. Yeah. Come on, David knew what conviction
conviction was. See, we have lost sight of conviction yes. in the day that we live in. Amen? Yes. God's looking for people. See, when you have a heart that is seeking after God right. and not after the, the, the riches yes. of the world and the fame and the fortune and all that comes with it. Whenever you begin to seek after God with your whole heart, whenever you begin to set your heart like flint toward God and His ways, conviction will be a part of your life. Preachers have, have preached the conviction right out of the hearts of the people. Amen? People that used to feel bad because of sin no longer do because of the dumb preachers of the pulpit that have preached them. You don't have to feel bad because of sin anymore. Amen? Amen? Even when somebody does feel conviction, when they run to their preacher, he talks them out of it. Right. Amen? Truth. You don't need to feel bad here. Read my new book. Yeah. Amen? Amen. David had conviction in his heart. Amen? David's heart knew conviction. Right. Whenever he committed sin, it's his heart on, smote him. Jesus. Whenever you sin today, your heart should smite you. On, you should feel that. Right. Brother Rodney, when you lie, you should feel it right here. Whenever you cheat, you should feel it right here. When you sin, you should feel it right here. Well, I feel bad. You are too. That's right. If we've sinned, we should feel bad. That's right. I tell you where the danger lies. Brother Dave, is whenever you start sinning and you don't feel bad. Amen. Then you might want to find you an old fashioned altar and say, God, what's happened to me? Amen. 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 What's happened? Because as long as the Spirit of God deals with you, your heart will be smitten because of sin. Amen. And right. David's heart knew what conviction was. Right. Amen. We're talking about having a heart of conviction today. Amen. And this heart of conviction led David to have a heart of repentance. Yes, because conviction will bring repentance. You see, when David was caught in his sin, we do not find him playing the blame game. Yes, when Nathan comes to him, and finally after telling him the story, and David realizes he's talking to him, when he points his finger in his face and says, You are the man. Search the scriptures. Yeah. You don't find David blaming nobody. Amen. He don't blame his cold relationship with his wife. All right. He don't blame Bathsheba for taking a bath out there on a rooftop. Yeah. He blames himself. Oh. Amen. Yeah. Because of his heart of integrity. Oh. Because of his heart that sought after the very heart of God. Oh. Because of the conviction that he had in his heart. God's looking for somebody that's got conviction. Yeah. God's looking for somebody that won't Try to blame everybody else for the problems in their life. Yes. So whenever Nathan sticks his finger in his face, he said, you're the man, David. You did it. David says, you know what? You're right. He says, I and I alone have sinned before you, God. I've done this terrible thing. We see then how the actions that David takes later is because of that which is found in his heart. Come on, he repents because repentance is found in his heart. He is convicted because conviction is found in his heart. Right. He walks integrity before God Come because on. integrity is found in his heart. Amen. David knew that his heart affected the way that he lived. Amen. The day that we live in, there is a great lack of responsibility yes, sir. in the heart of most people. True. Usually the first thing our flesh wants to do when we're caught doing something is to blame somebody else for what we've done. Come on. And we see that all the way from the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. When God comes along and Adam and Eve have sinned. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Adam blames Eve and Eve blames the snake. Right. And so goes the story today. Amen. I'd go to church if it wasn't for Brother David. Yeah. I wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for Brother Sleeves. Yeah. They're the ones that caused me to do this. And we see that all the way from our government now, all the way down to the man Amen. in the gutter. You go yeah. find him today. He's blaming somebody oh, for the man. fact that he drunk his breakfast out of a brown paper sack. Yeah. Amen. It's time we stood before the mirror and said, I did this. Yeah. It's my fault. Yes. It's my fault. Confess. But David didn't stand there before Nathan the prophet and say, don't judge me. Amen. We all, we all sin, Nathan. Amen. It's not my fault, Nathan. Come on. Nobody's perfect, Nathan. Mm -hmm. 
No. He didn't stand there and say, he didn't stand there and say, well, God knows my heart. Mom. You know why? Because he knew that God did know his heart. Yes, sir. He could stand there and try to make every excuse in the book and try to blame the Sheba and try to blame his wife. Exactly. But he knew that God knew where it came from. Absolutely. He was birthed in David's. Yes. He was birthed in David. Right. Amen. True. Amen. Yes. He was birthed in David. Just because you see a woman out here having a bath on her rooftop. Yeah. That doesn't excuse you for all the actions that follow. Right. And David knew it. Amen. David knew it. So we find David's prayer in Psalms, the 51st chapter. Turn over there. Psalms 51. We see that David had a heart of integrity. We see that David, the Bible says, had a perfect heart before God. We see that David had conviction in his heart. We see that David had a heart of repentance. Right. We see a lot of attributes in the heart of King David that Come is on. missing in the society that we have today. Right. We find whenever he sinned, he didn't run and get a copy of the best-selling, you know, self-assuring gospel that's out there that you're not that bad, you're a pretty good guy, you've got to think positive thoughts, you've got to think better about yourself, you've got to quit listening to everybody else, that's just condemnation, don't pay no attention to that, that's under the law, that's legalism, no, David has himself a come to Jesus meeting. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. David has himself a come to Jesus meeting. It's not very hard. Right. You can look at David's sin and you can look at David's failures, but if you really look, it's not very hard to find out why God chose him to be the king. Why God chose David and what he found in David's heart that pleased him. Amen. Amen. Listen, God knows you're going to sin. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. God knows you're going to mess up. Right. That ain't the question. The question is what are you going to do after you mess up? Amen. You going to blame it on everybody else? Or are you going to take responsibility and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm, the Bible says if we will confess our sin, not blame it on somebody else. Right. He is faithful. He is yep. just to forgive. forgive us of our sin. Yeah. Amen. True. See what David prays here. Mm -hmm. Psalms 51, beginning in the first verse. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. <clears throat> Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. You're not going to find him blaming anybody in this chapter. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Amen. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear with thou judges. Now listen to what he said there. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. All right. That thou mightest judgest when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. You know what he's saying, Lord? So there's no misunderstanding and so that nobody else is involved in this. My fault. All right. My fault. Oh, you talk about a rare commodity in the day that we live in. Amen. Amen. True. Talk to people today. Right. See how many people you find that admit it's their fault and not somebody else's. Amen. But this comes from David's heart. Yes. Amen. Listen to what he says. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth. Where at? In the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. He's talking about his heart. The place that only God sees. <clears throat> Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Now listen to what he said. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. So this stuff he's talking about, the inward parts. This stuff he's talking about, the hidden part. Now he tells us what that is. 
Create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Yeah. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. We're talking about the heart of David today. We're talking about what separated him from the pack. Come on. We're talking about what God was looking for in a man at the time. Right. Not on the outward appearance and his strength and his stature, uh -huh. but some of see what you know why God looked on the heart? Because he knew that David's heart was going to produce the works that David did. Right. It was going to produce the fruit that David did. Come on. God's not going to choose somebody with an evil and a wicked heart. Why? Because he knows their evil and wicked heart is going to be that which brings forth the fruit in their life. Right. Amen. Amen. So he looks at David. Knowing David is not perfect. Yeah. God has foreknowledge. He knew what was going to happen before it ever happened when he chose David. All Amen. Right. You whine and ball today and say, well, I can't serve God. He called me, but I've messed up. He knew you was going to mess up before he called you. Amen? Right. But he saw something in your heart. Mm -hmm. True. Oh, hallelujah. He saw something in David's heart. Yes. I know he's going to mess up, but I know he's going to repent. Oh, hallelujah. I know he's going to mess up, but I know he's going to repent. Right. Created me a clean heart. Right. Renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. When your heart is right, it produces right living. Amen. Sinless, perfect, no. But it will produce the things that God wants us to produce. All right. The fruit that God wants us to produce. The condition of your heart affects the spiritual fruit that you bring forth. Amen. You can't love others unless there's first love in your heart. Right. You can't have compassion for others unless there's first compassion yeah, in your right. heart. You can't give unless first you have a giving heart. Exactly. When our heart is right, mm -hmm. we too will hunger for God. Yes. When our heart is right, we too will know conviction. Yes. When our heart is right, we too will know repentance. Amen. When our prayer is no longer directed so much toward the symptoms, yeah. but toward that which is causing our problem, mm -hmm. that which is the root of the problem in our life, yeah. then maybe, yeah. then maybe we can get past the things of the flesh and begin to produce the things of the Spirit yeah. because we have found us an old-fashioned altar somewhere yeah. and we've cried out, God, Created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. All of my faults, all of my failures, I take responsibility for them. I'm tired of blaming everybody else. It's my fault. I lay myself bare before you and ask you to search the inward parts of my heart and make me more like you and less like me. Hallelujah. So that I can bring forth spiritual fruit. Glory Amen. A right heart produces right living. The reason we got people today that can't live right or don't want to live right, don't have a desire to live right, because their heart ain't right. Amen. 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 They came into the church, they signed a book. Uh -huh. They might even felt some conviction. Yeah. But smarty pants, Mr. Hollywood, behind the podium, preached conviction right out of their life. Right. You don't have to feel bad. True. I want you to feel good. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you live in, what kind of religion you've got, no matter what kind of God you worship, I want you to feel good when you leave my church. Come on, brother. Oh, That's I thank preaching. God today for conviction. That's good preaching. I thank God today that whenever I do something wrong, I feel that in my heart today. Amen. And you better thank God. Yes, sir. Because you get, now I know, I know that your convictions and my convictions are not the same. Right. But you better thank God if you have some convictions left today. Amen. Right. Because many people don't. They can lie to you. They can steal right. from you. They can cheat on you. Right. And sleep like a baby. Amen. Right. True. And most of it done with the stamp of approval by the pitiful mess that is called pastors today. Amen. Amen. True. God mm -hmm. 
is looking today for the same thing he was looking for when he went and searched for somebody in David's day. I'm looking for somebody that's got a heart for the work of God. I'm looking for somebody that's got a, got a heart and that is after me, seeking after me, and not after fame and fortune and the wealth and the riches of the world. Yes. Amen. <laughs> because your heart will tell on you. Amen. Right. Sooner or later, your heart will tell on you. Absolutely. Hallelujah. If the Lord tarries next Sunday, we're going to look at Nehemiah. All right. And the heart that Nehemiah had. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. When you begin to look at some of these great men of God, and you begin to look at their actions, knowing, yes. knowing that that which is in your heart produces your doings, produces your fruit. Right. And we can begin to say, Lord, maybe I don't line up quite like I'm supposed to. Maybe I ain't been praying just right. All right. Amen. Come on. Maybe I need to go back and look at Psalms, the 51st chapter. Yeah. Maybe I need to do some praying like David. Maybe I need to do some praying like David. Amen. I've sinned against you. Yes, Lord. Created me a clean heart. Yes, Lord. Renew a right spirit Praise within Lord. me. Yeah, wow. You Praise will find it is impossible. Praise for your heart not to affect the way you live. Amen. Amen. Truth. Just like today, it's impossible for you to have a bad heart in the natural and it not affect mm -hmm. the way you live. That's right, Brother Billy. The heart. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning has something before we go.